Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, what's up, Big High? Up, gather around, gather yes, around. Sir. We got comedian Dave J in the building. What's up, yes, brother? All the way from Austin, Texas. How are you? Great, man. Uh, we're coming in hot. Uh, what did he say podcast? Dude, streets talking about it, man. Uh, I just got back from doing a three-day Cali run. Shout out to everybody. Fresno, Merced, Visalia. And uh, the feedback is real. We're headed to El Paso next. Uh, Big Hive gonna be in the building. Yes, sir. We're gonna be out there, fresh off the special. You know what I'm saying? Not for everybody. It's not for everybody, man. Yeah. But but it's it's for some people, man. The people <laughs> that like it like it. You know? Oh, uh, the ones that like it love it. Love it exactly. But yeah, man. Uh, we're coming at you live from I don't know what the name of this studio is gonna be, but uh, maybe Dave can help you think of a name. Around some names. Yeah. We have producer Rob. He got a microphone. I did got a mic. No camera. But no I got camera. A mic. If y'all want to see the luxurious beard, you gonna have to sign up on the Patreon. <laughs> I got competition over here yeah, now. He kind of looks yeah. like me. Yeah. <laughs> no, we could be brothers. Hey, y'all can't get on a plane together. <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. Hey, no backpacks, on. no plane. <laughs> yeah, come on the plane. Sit looking real suspicious. We got we go at the same time. One of us gets pops. One of us gets through. That's yeah, how you do that's it. That's, that's the plan. Strategy. That's the it's done. Chess not checkers. I, I through. I just uh, I just flew in the other night from from the Cali run, and sometimes, bro, you be like, maybe because I'm a white belt, two stripes, but like. <laughs> Head on a swip, like you know what I mean. Yeah. Sometimes you just really watching yeah. people's body language. I know they got cameras everywhere, but sometimes yeah. you got to be like on the ground level before backup. before backup shows up. You, know what I'm saying? you already done assess the situation. You're on the front lines, a, a true yeah. first responder. Yeah. So in between <laughs> having a burger and a beer and French fries, like yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just kind of you're pre responder before the before yeah. there's something to respond. That to. way I could be like, is it right there? Red shirt, <laughs> red shirt. You're wiping your mouth right there. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little dizzy off them two beers. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Lightweight. Those airport beers are different, man. Yeah, they get they get a tall boys, and then yeah. I was stuck in Colorado in Denver. They're known for their beers, mm. so it was especially like, at that elevation. Up there, I, I factored that, that in too. That. Plus, I really don't really drink a whole bunch of beer like that. Yeah, you gotta factor in the elevation, the edibles, all of it, man. So shrooms, shrooms, throw away. everything hits different, man. Hell yeah! So, uh, man, welcome to Houston, Big Don. Yes, thank you, dude. I love Houston. I've I've been here just a couple of times, and it feels. I was talking on the phone with my wife. It feels like almost like you, Miami in floor in Texas the humidity part or what like the <laughs> humidity just like like I don't know it feels like it was I was, like immigrants food a lot of immigrants a lot of pit bulls you <laughs> yeah, know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my wife's from Florida okay she's from Broward and oh, so okay, I spent Broward a lot of time County. over there yeah. yeah and so like when you drive around there like I'm not talking like South Beach you know yeah. you drive around like in the city where people yeah. live dreadlocks yeah. gold teeth dreadlocks chickens you know yeah. what I mean that type of shit yeah. Yeah. um Houston to me feels it's like like Houston and San Antonio, compared to the other big cities in Texas, feels like a real place. You know what I mean? <laughs> like Austin, it feels like a it's like a carnival. You know what I mean? Like it's all so Festival. corporate. Yeah, everything's yeah. everything is like weird, but it's like sponsored by Google. Yeah, you know corporate I mean? weird. <laughs> yeah. But Houston, Houston, and San Antonio are the two places where you're like, oh, these are this is what Texas is like. Yeah. You know? Okay. Do you feel like Austin has become like a comedy? Hub, I don't want to say Mecca, you know what I'm saying? Because it's talent yeah, yeah, yeah. all over the place. You know I think, yeah, I think people are treating it that way. I and mean, people are definitely showing up. A lot of people that I've never seen before showing up. I think it, it is, a, I'm, I'm happy that I'm there because I, I want to live in Texas. And I don't want to live in New York. I don't want to live in California. So if more opportunity is going to come to Austin, then I'm happy with that. But it is, I mean, right now there's, Rogan has opened up his club. Rogan, Cap City, Creek in the Cave. They're about to open the Sunset Strip, Belvita Room, wait, East wait, Austin wait. Comedy Sunset Club. Sunset Strip? That's the name of a, of a place? Yeah, they didn't really think it through <laughs> when they were coming to Texas. <laughs> it's called Sunset Strip Comedy Club. There's like probably seven comedy clubs, and four of them are within walking distance of each other. Well, you, you, you know what's interesting is like Austin has been known as the live comedy, what, capital? of the L world I, I mean not, not like live, live music, music. Yeah. Live sorry music. Yeah. my bad yeah. and that's my point so yeah. it is it's known for being live music capital yeah it damn near sound like the amount of clubs per capita mm -hmm. yeah. like it's trying to have that many stages yeah and and even the bar shows are pretty good yeah. i mean people are just showing up for the idea of comedy you know like to, to get people to show up for a showcase that's good Friday, Saturday night, you'll have half a dozen sold out showcases in the city. And that's yeah. not including headliners. People just like the idea of coming out, yeah. which is good, you know? And I think it's better than, I think calling Austin live, the live music capital, I've heard from musicians that they're like, yeah, kind of, but 
there's a million bars on Sixth Street and they just want you to like play covers. Yeah. So, you, no one, there's, there's you don't really hear a lot of people who are coming out with like original music in Austin. But there's, in comedy, you can only do it that way. So I think even more so for comedy. Debatable. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Debatable. It depends. It depends. Some people yeah. be biting out there. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. Yeah. But it's, it's been, it's crazy, it's hectic, but it's, there's definitely a lot of stage time right now. Have you, have you, have you boarded the mothership? I have stood outside of the mothership. Oh, you stood outside. I've stood you outside. Were, I've like beam me up. You were yeah. You weren't yeah. abducted. <laughs> no, I was, not, I was not abducted. I was out there like y'all got anal probes. Uh, they didn't stick no alpha brain up your ass. Or no, like no, 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 no. Give you an alpha brain probe. It's crazy. Dude. Alpha, alpha brain probe. enema. Oh man, that's it. The security they got in there is crazy. It's yeah. almost like you go. They like a, a face scan when you mm-hmm. walk in the club. Face scan. They the phone in the thing. What in the, the globalist? Is Dude, I went on. to I went to Whole Foods and Listen, uh, I think I think we need Joe Rogan to go in front of Congress. We need no <laughs> yeah. Why are, are you doing? collecting this data, Mr. Yeah. Rogan? Who has access to Yeah, it? let me find out we you back by the CCP. Know, I don't know what they're doing it for. Whole Foods facial scan. They have a yeah. they have a palm reader now. I don't want to open my when you because it's Amazon. They're like you could put so instead of you know you can do like face scan, you could do like a fingerprint. They're like mm-hmm. no, re, we'll read your whole palm. And yeah. I'm like no. How much more of my body does Amazon want to see? You know yeah. what I mean? Just to buy grapes, bro. Especially oh, to go into those Amazon, but that's when you go to Whole Foods. Oh, like, Whole in Foods. the checkout, they're like, you can just make it so that in, is it the one you where can you're scan. Just the shit in the cart it's the mark of the beast. No, edition. it's just a regular. Oh, just a regular. It's just a regular checkout. It's a lady there. Oh. You know what I mean? I'm like, why are you? They're like, you want to put a chip in your forehead? And... Have you all gone <laughs> yes. to any of those? The ones where they're like, they're like completely unmanned. Nah. Do we have? Oh, oh, you, oh, you mean like uh, where you, you don't even in. scan on the way out? Yeah, it's just as you're putting it in the cart. Like, yeah, I've and, seen that. And you walk but out. But they got to know like whose account to charge, right? So right. You, yeah. you check in somehow? Yeah, you oh, check in you somehow. Your phone they know who is it, it is. Yeah, it's like a give smart you a cart or some shit like that. It knows what you're putting in the cart and yeah. it's tied to your account. So then you just yeah, it's, it's walk out. They know too much. Amazon knows too much about you. Wow. Wow. They're crazy. So, and, and Alexa's and, and in my house. They know what I sound like. The, the only you know thing I like I mean? about that in the comedy club is now you now you really can't act up, right? Yeah. Because like, they know exactly who the fuck you are. You, you're not gonna run up on stage and slap no one. Because hey, no, no, we got your face, oh, yeah. bro. We got. We, we, That's we, funny. They they all fuck you up over there too. Well, I, that too. I, yeah, I, I imagine all, because uh, Rogan just walks security. around with Navy SEALs, <laughs> <laughs> and then it's funny. Is all the door guys are comics, and so yeah. but then you see a couple of door guys with like real fucking buff tight ass shirts. I'm like, oh, those are those are the ringers. Yeah. You got to have somebody who can actually kick somebody yeah. out. I Just said, to "Stop filming, ma'am." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trying to blend in. I you got know, a like couple a... Eagle Scouts to roll with me, personally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like well, he's got a white belt. You know, uh, <laughs> that rolls with him sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. Two Does stripes. that match your shoes? So that type of shit. <laughs> white belt, two stripes. <laughs> You know, Just in case. Baby Glock. Some people know him as Baby, baby. Glock in the, in the streets. As the ladies call you Baby Glock? No, they call me. That's what my wife called me. She's like, take out the trash, Baby Glock. <laughs> yeah. It's got that, that ultra compact. Yeah, the Chile Pekin. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Picoso. Fiery. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, um, one of my goals is to get so good at stand up. Yeah. That to where any of these out of town California comedians uh-huh. come up in an Austin venue uh-huh. and they see one of the Texas heavy hitter representatives blazing that stage up. That's I want them to be like, bro, where the hell are you from? Like, yeah. bitch, you on my soil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's come crazy. and take it. It's crazy because now there's a lot of people who moved here like a year ago and they're like, wow, this, this. These guys, these, these the Texas guys are great. I'm like, this guy's, this guy's not from here. <laughs> this like, you guys, you guys don't know the Texas guys. You know what uh, I mean? Yeah. So there's a lot of people, especially Austin, is big. They're even better. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of big. <laughs> there's a, a big like uh, uh, kind of emphasis on like, man, look at all these guys. That look at all the talent that's here. Blah blah blah. I'm like, there was a, you guys are these people just got here. There was mm-hmm. already a shit ton of people here killing it before all this. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm trying to embrace it. Because I think there's a lot of people who are kind of like, no, 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 that's not. Uh, I don't, I don't want to reject Californians. I want yeah, whatever. Course, yeah. But I'm like, hey, let's show. Them. You know what I mean? Let's like, yeah, exactly. You got here. This is the reason you came yeah. here for a reason. Yeah. There's there was there's homegrown talent here that's undeniable. You yeah, know? you got to give them pop quizzes on Texas history. Like, hey man, who was Davy Crockett? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Austin comedy was always popping, right? When I when I first started, but it was also super gatekeeping. Like totally. If if you weren't an Austin comic, you weren't doing shit in yeah. Austin. Like 
no, we got all the comics we need. And now with the, with the influx of, of, of transplants from California and New York and wherever, they can't do that anymore because yeah. no, no one, no, no one's an Austin comic. <laughs> oh, anymore. totally. So, so like, like now, once that happened, then I started getting invited to little little showcases. Mm-hmm. They're like, and like what he was talking about, like, yeah, dude, it's a sold out. Like people are here to see nobody. They're just yeah. here to see comedy, and that doesn't happen a lot of places. <laughs> you know. Yeah. No, it's yeah. great, man. I think it, the, the scene is so much different now. So much more different now than it was before COVID. Because they're all like you're right. It was very gatekeepy, yeah. And a lot of those gatekeepers are they're on. The, there's a new gate. They're on the outside of the gate. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's <laughs> like there's always going to be some level of gatekeeping, but um, right, right. those people there you don't see them a lot anymore. You know what I mean? They kind of mm-hmm. like took their ball and went home. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. the gatekeepers did. Yeah. Oh. Those, the OC gate, Austin <laughs> gatekeepers. Does comedy even exist anymore? Yeah. As I had one of them ask me in a in a taco spot one time. Does comedy? <laughs> I even ran into, yeah, anymore? I ran into yeah, I ran into a, to a, an older uh, Austin co- comic and ran to him in a, at a taco spot in San Antonio after a show and he was all like, "Let me ask you a question, man. You don't have to answer it to me. Just answer it for yourself." <laughs> goes, the stand up something to think the about. The stand up comedy still exists. <laughs> I'm like, get the f- I'm trying to eat my taco, bro. You don't get the fuck out of here with your philosophical. I'm trying question. to figure out what yeah. the hell was he trying to get at, like uh, just that it all died a when purist, they- the pure, you know, you know, because it, it's now it's every, every, everything's different, right? Because you got TikTokers and and yeah. and and just rappers. Cl- clubs aren't even booking, you know, quote unquote comic. But they yeah. whatever their definition of comics is, if it doesn't. Fall under that. that yeah, that, you can sell tickets. So get ain't real. If you, if oh, oh you yeah, get, that's even worse. That pisses matter. them off. Yeah, the worst because to them, they're these unappreciated geniuses, and yeah. and you know here comes this person that's not as funny as me. You know, getting the success that that I should have having fans. Yeah, <laughs> hell wrong <laughs> with you. You boy, you the audacity. The people relating to you. Yeah, but. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You actually want that's, people to laugh at your jokes? Ew. There is. I think there's yeah. a lot, and I understand that frustration of being like, fuck. I want to make people I want think. To, I want to do that. I want to be like the guy. But it's like, there's, a lot of people are funny. Yeah. But can you be funny and also uh, build an audience that relates to you, is interested in what you have to say, that uh, identifies with you? Because after a show, it's great if someone goes, man, you're funny. I go, I heard you. I, I, I know if I was funny or not tonight because I can hear the audience. But I love <laughs> when someone goes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like yeah. what you were saying, dude, me too. You know what I mean? Like that type of stuff. That's the good stuff. Yeah. You know, nothing better than a thoughtful compliment. Yeah, yeah. When they can yeah. appreciate when, uh, yeah, I love I love when when comedy appreciators yeah. come up to you with that after the show and they're like, oh, that joke when you did this and it, you know, you know, you, you yeah, you, then you hit it with this and they're like, oh, okay, cool. You were actually list, uh, listening. Not yeah. Sometimes they know you too much. You man. didn't just yeah. made a call back. Yeah, you just didn't laugh at the act out. <laughs> so or got a tag for you. Yeah, yeah that was yeah, a funny up. voice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're actually like, man, you know too much uh, nomenclature, bro. You yeah, and they are man. There's some there's name. some savvy comedy fans now, man. They, yeah. they they absorb it like like crazy. They know they know all the lingo and everything. thanks to podcasts too, man. Because yep. you can hear and get the behind the scenes on on all your favorite comics now. They all got. They all got podcasts, so you can you can hear. Or sometimes they blow smoke up your ass too. They be like, "Man, I saw Dave Chappelle last week. Man, I laughed way harder, man. Way more times <laughs> on this shit, dog." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. They got a little. Where was the Dave Chappelle, Colonel? Neta, bro. You're funny. Hey, neta, You're bro. Funnier than Dave Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Neta, bro. Okay. Yeah. Right. Put it on a shirt. Funnier than Dave Chappelle. <laughs> yeah. This one dude. Can you sign it? Can Can you write that down for me? <laughs> this one guy said, "I'm funnier than Dave Chappelle." <laughs> yeah, I, you know some say allegedly. Dave, are you from Austin? No, I'm not from. Austin. I live. I've been in Austin. I've been in Texas nine years, oh. but I'm from Massachusetts. Oh, cool. Yeah, came down for work, and I love living in Texas. I like Central Texas. I love like especially this time of year. To me, everyone's like fall in New England. To me, I'm like spring in Texas is beautiful. We, up there, we don't got colorful flowers. We don't got the birds. We don't. The weather is perfect this time of year, and I don't mind the heat. What did you say? What kind of flowers did you say? We don't. We all get down here. The wildflowers. Uh-huh. Oh. Everything in New England is gray or gray, brown, or green. 
Yeah. There's no yeah, no blue bonnets up there. No, no, no wildflowers. No, nothing. nothing. The birds are brown all year round. I just moved to the Central Texas this past weekend. Yeah, and I just told Ching, I was like, I should have moved years ago. It's the best. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Nice. Yeah. No, I love it. I love Texas. The three of my kids born in Texas. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm trying to figure. You maybe you could tell me. I'm trying to figure out how long do I got to be here before I can say I'm from Texas? Because uh, the answer is not nine. I found that out. <laughs> really? <laughs> I would have said ten. I mean. I feel, say, I feel. I say you good now, bro. You think so? Yeah. yeah. I got three anchor babies in here. Yeah. Well, there you go. I, I say you yeah, good yeah, now. If you're bro. raising a kid here, you're you're, you're Texan, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Sure. You know, I mean, you got you know, the motherfucking the tamale king of Texas said you good. So hey, you know, got the cosign. I mean, it's on. We got it on tape. What else you want, bro? What you what you want? Jay Prince himself <laughs> to walk up in here <laughs> and say, hey, man, you good with us? You mob ties. No, this is hey. This is almost this around to everyone I know. Yeah, because I do shows and I go in Texas. Like, so how long? You know, I've been here nine years. Like I'm from Texas. They're like, no. I'm like, God ah, damn, thought you were nice. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no. the southern hospitality. <laughs> we need we need to see your papers all the way back to the <laughs> you, you damn Yankee. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff's made in New York City. That's what I feel. I feel yeah, like right. that way in in Austin. People showing up, and I'm like, y'all, y'all are ruined in Texas. <laughs> I've been here two seconds. I'm like, you guys, it's you guys. It's not me. It's you guys. Keep Texas, yeah. Texas, bro. Yeah, yeah. The hell out of here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> man, it's, it's, hey, California, man, like, I was talking to this to this uh, gentleman out there. He owns this, uh, like, real estate thing called GotGasa.com, like Got Milk. And he's like, he's like, dude, a lot of people leaving. He's like, but a lot of people want to live here too. And he was just talking about like, but everybody he was naming was just immigrants. He's like, boy, Peruvians, some of the hardest working people. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like people from Nashville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't people from Nashville or like Dallas or anything like that yeah. going yeah. that way. But um, I, kicking it with the promoter and the, and the locals and the comedians and folks out there, they were pointing out stuff. Because, you know, when you're in a market, you're trying to like pick up on the local vibe of, of what people yeah. are concerned with. And uh, they had mentioned that that high speed rail, the light rail. He's like, they're like billions and billions of dollars, man. They can't finish it. They can't get it done. The cost of materials and labor went up, and they yeah. just they're like they just started it for nothing. Now they, it's just a canvas for people that want to do graffiti. Yeah, you know, it's all incomplete, mm-hmm. and uh, they're bitching about Newsome. And nice. oh yeah, I, I don't like anyone. Like, I don't, I don't huh? see. I say I like arts and crafts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We, oh, man. I, I, I support the arts. That's yeah, good. yeah. I don't see what I don't see how that guy keeps getting elected. Nobody, nobody I know likes him. You know what I mean? There's, I can't. Who's the person that voted for this guy? Everybody I talk to is like, yeah, he sucks. Or they're indifferent, right? Yeah. If, if they don't hate him, they're probably just kind of like, well, I mean, you know, he's trying or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But mm. where's the rail from? From San Francisco to LA? Yeah, they were supposed to make it from like from the Bay to LA. Okay. And, uh, so it was supposed to hit all that Central Cali. I mean, connect everything. Yeah. And it's. It's just one of them projects, man. Was that an Elon thing? Was that an Elon? Nah, Musk thing? I think that was before. I don't know. Yeah, I really don't think Elon had anything to do yeah, with don't, that. Don't don't, don't yeah. put that on Elon. Don't you yeah. put that on Mr. Musk? <laughs> put that on Austin's own Austin's fine, Austin's uh, finest citizen. I think yeah. he I think he lives there. No, nah, he lives like in like San Benito, like he dog. Well, wait, uh, Brownsville. Uh, yeah, oh, he's over there, dude. Oh, he's down, well, there, he's got, down there eating elotes and shit, bro. Well, we got Tesla. Yeah. We got the, we got. It's like ten miles from my house. Yeah, it's huge. It's it's like ha- the building's literally half a mile long. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, I drove past it. Uh, yeah, it's uh, so it's he's uh, he's impressive. out there. They actually build the cars there. Or? Yeah, really. Yeah, it's in Del Valley. It's like near the airport. Um, it's Del Valley was like, I think it's in Travis County, but it's like pretty poor. You know what I mean? Like they like just got electricity or some shit. You know what I mean? Like so the Tesla factory is like huge over there, mm. and they're supposed to be like building, helping them with like build schools and stuff. And like communities as a part of being like being there, you know what I mean? But Austin, it it, keep, it attracts all these like tech people, mm-hmm. and and it has even before COVID, and you know they get all this kind of support from the state, and they're like, yeah, because you guys are gonna bring jobs, you're gonna bring tax revenue, blah blah blah. But once they got the foundation laid down, they're like, yeah, I mean, we can do whatever we want. Like I know a dozen people who have been laid off in tech in Austin, and then my day job is in tech. Uh, in the past like two months, like everybody is shedding people, mm-hmm. so it's 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 nice that they want to come there, but there it's also like you know, don't show up and, and be be do what you said you were gonna do, mm-hmm. like provide the jobs and don't just take the tax breaks and 
people who live in places like Del Valley. Spoken like a true Texan. <laughs> <laughs> Told you I'm from Texas. So, so they're hiring Told just enough Texas. people to get the incentives long enough, and then, then yeah, I mean, it definitely feels like, and this is that's what they're incentivized to do mm-hmm. is to go like, hey, they're going to give us tax breaks. Okay, we'll go, but they're they're under no obligation to actually fall through on the jobs. You know what I mean? He could, Elon's been saying, he's like, well, we might have to cut production because whatever he's been hinting at it for like a year. And it's like, well, you know, you just got, you know, massive sort of. He's mad at his fans. Like y'all motherfuckers can only afford one Tesla. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I mean, what, I mean, come on, man. Y'all see I'm down here, bro. Y'all ain't. Shit. Y'all acting like I can't just go to another state. I'm trying. That's it. Well, that's what happened when he get from California. He, he basically, if you worked at a Tesla in California, you found out that you lost your job on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'm moving to Texas. And they were like, oh, uh, what, what about, about me? <laughs> <laughs> can, can, I, can I go too? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, emails bouncing back like, damn, bro. My- <laughs> <laughs> Key don't <Yeah>. work. <laughs> damn. But I, mean, I, don't mean get, I don't mean to get all political. Showed up. It's just one of those little like red and white clothes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, 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 we're close. Hey, what, was, what was that one? <laughs> on Tesla. What, what were those two dudes? Uh, the Ligma and Johnson. Ligma they, Johnson, yeah. What did they get like laid off from? It, it was a prank. It was like a tech department, right? They were like coders or something or developers. But I, I I can't remember that story. But it was like, was, was it Twitter? Yeah, it was on Twitter. They were like outside no, but it had CNN. Be, supposedly I think. they they got fired from Twitter, right? Yeah. And the media was so thirsty to get something that's like anti Elon, yeah, anti yeah. Twitter two point oh. Yeah. That that these two dudes. Did y'all see that? These two mm-hmm. dudes had boxes, and um, it was like two random like they look like they could pass as uh, engineers, yeah. and coders. Yeah. But they were they had their boxes acting like they got fired, and everyone's interviewing. It's like over here with Ligma and Johnson, <laughs> Ligma and Johnson, Ligma Johnson. That's so funny. And they're just like, yeah, man, it's just you know one day to the next, bro. They let us go. Yeah. It was like a viral hoax. That's hilarious. Uh, I meeting. ain't seen that, but I did see people saying that since he did away with the the HR department and Twitter, they're like, just go to your LinkedIn and put that you used to work for Twitter. There's like no process for verification. Right yeah. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not that's not a bad move. Oh, because yeah. he got rid of HR. Yeah, there's no. Yeah, no, there's yeah no so HR if you apply department. for a job and they can't verify, yeah, that you actually work there. <gasps> Damn. Update my LinkedIn. Savage. So yeah, man, and and that's crazy, man. Because I remember when I when I was a uh, vice president of uh, Northwestern Sales for Twitter. Back mm-hmm. in the day, yeah, that, that would have never happened. Yeah. Yeah. Back, you know, back when, I, back, yeah. back when I was making like four hundred fifty thousand a year, you know, yeah. plus plus a six weeks paid vacation. So you know the uh, thing. full medical back back when I was making that man, yeah. that would have never happened. <laughs> back then, back then. Yeah. you know, Twitter two point oh, <laughs> you bro, know, that's a whole yeah. Other Twitter is different. Twitter's so different. Uh, where you where you hit it next, man? Road wise, uh, I'm doing LOL in San Antonio on the sixteenth of April. Um, I'm headlining that night and then uh, I got another gig in San Antonio after that but that's kind of the one I'm looking forward to um, just found out about it I don't know week or two ago so I'm excited about that and when is it again? Nice. April 16th San Antonio LOL hell yeah mark your calendar so yeah. you're doing like a whole hour yeah I'm gonna go do it's my, my first time headlining there so uh, hopefully we can sell some tickets and they'll, they'll be happy with me and come back um, so do it an hour one night? One night. One night. Thir- uh, uh, like a Sunday or thir- uh, the sixteenth is a Sunday. A Sunday. It's a Sunday. Yeah. Right on. I'm excited about it. It's cool. You know. You should do a um, like a little viral internet clip where like like I'm promoting my show. Like you know the people that flip signs and shit. Like yeah, stand yeah. out there just like 281 North or anywhere. You could just fake it, make it like San Antonio. Just got yeah. laid off from Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Telling people about my show April 16th at the LOL. Like yeah, dude, just got laid off from Twitter or whatever. You'll find the joke in it, but like I just picture that shit. Like yeah. a bunch of honking in the background. Okay, good. Thank you. April 16th. Just trying to get the word out, man. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like uh, like LA style, New York style, where they be barking for the yeah. tickets. Oh yeah. So if you out there like the like you panhandling, someone gives you change. No, ma'am, I'm actually uh, <laughs> nationally touring. Yeah, it's funny. It is uh, it, it was never this way in Austin, but now because of the concentration of all the comedy clubs, people are barking like it's New York. You know? oh, yeah, like people are barking for stage mm, time. Interesting. Yeah. I wonder what mm, that's gonna do. Got for- to bring in some. And then are they having to, to if they don't bring in enough, are they having to like pay to? It's actually right now. It's on? pretty. It's pretty fair. Where is it? No, you don't have to pay to get on. Okay. There's no pay to play in Austin. Okay. They, they they tried that like before COVID. Payola. And it was like people were like, wait, 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 yeah. it's pay to get on stage? 
Well, if yes. you don't bring in enough people, if they say you got to bring five people, you only bring three, yeah. then you, you pay the other two yeah. so you can get on. Oh, work. That's how it was in Boston, was right? Hustle, yeah. uh, I know, I've never performed like in the local scene in Boston, mm-hmm. but I think, yeah, there are bringer shows there. I think it's a big... That's good. He, he's New a York Texas comic. That's yeah, right. From Texas, yeah. That's Boston. Right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I was just born there, yeah. bro. I didn't yeah, know yeah. about that till my family asked when I first started and I was starting to get on a bunch of shows. My brother was like, "Hey, are you are you paying to get on all these shows?" I was like, "No, they're paying me, man." And he goes, yeah. "Oh, okay." He goes, "I just want to make sure you weren't like paying to get on all these shows because apparently that's big in the like the rap game. Also, like a lot. Oh, to, like open up. Like, yeah, they bring in a headliner and then they yeah. charge all these like little local rappers. And then that to, messes like, up get the head- show. And that messes up the headliner yeah. show, bro. Yeah. Sometimes. Oh yeah, dude. If, if someone is if, if I book a showcase, I book a Monday show at the Creek in Austin. If someone brought a lot of people, I'm like, "Oh, you're going last." You know what I mean? I don't <laughs> want everyone to. You and your room. friends to be hanging out at the bar at the end yeah. of the show. You know what I mean? You brought them; they're here. But yeah, they, there's especially in New York. I think there's a lot of like pay for mics, like dollar a minute or like five dollars <sighs> just to get access to the mic. Which is actually in a place like that might not be the worst thing in the world because they got in LA has this thing and it's starting to show up in Austin. Is like you go to an open mic and there's people who are not comedians in the line just genuinely mentally ill people <gasps> oh, yeah. for just like, I would just want to, <laughs> oh, yeah. I can go, are you give me a microphone? <laughs> like people like that. Like, especially cause Rogan's club is on sixth street. All these places are centered around sixth street. And, uh, sixth street is a nightmare yeah. now. Like since COVID it's a, it was already a nightmare, but it's a different kind of nightmare now. Yeah. Like it's just a lot of homeless people, a lot of crazy people, people drunk in the middle of the day. And people, it's funny to see people visiting Austin and they're like, we're going to go down to 6th Street and they're like pushing a stroller. I'm like, go back, go back. <laughs> yeah. like, don't come down here with your family. I, I've said it it's before, nightmare. man, Open, especially in big, big markets like that, an, oh, an open mic is a lot like a, a waiting room in an emergency room. <laughs> like like <laughs> yeah. at 3 o'clock in the morning. Like there's, there's like a small amount of people that should be there. Yeah. And then like a whole bunch of mentally ill people. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Don't, probably don't really need to be there. Yeah, yeah. We told you. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's starting to get that way a little bit, but. Wow. You got to wade through the bullshit. What are they? What, what's Austin? Have they said anything? Like the mayor, anybody? Like what they plan on doing? Because, like, you go to Cali, you'll hear them saying, like, fucking Newsom built all these little tiny homes for these people, and they don't, yeah. they're all empty. Or they'll convert a yeah. hotel into, like... They're doing the hotel thing. Mm-hmm. Is it working? Or people mad, know, like, well, we can't shoot up? Well, what they did... You should remember when it was, like... I don't know if you went down there right after COVID. It, it was all tents. So, mm-hmm. you get, like... Right before COVID, they uh, they did this thing. They They took away the camping ban, which is basically says you cannot just set up camp anywhere. They took that away. So then during COVID, you go under 35 right there between like 5th and 8th Street, right where the police station is. Hundreds of tents. Why'd they do away with that ban? I wonder. I don't know. I think it was like, a, well, because part of the ban was like, you can't just lay on the sidewalk. You know what I mean? You can't just sleep in front of a business, which I'm like, well, yeah, I'm trying to make money over here. But they, they did away with it because they were like, well, I don't know. I really don't know because these people are just they're just in the woods otherwise mm-hmm. so you start to see tents popping up in like public places during covid it was like under hundreds of tents underneath the highway in front of the courthouse they were like starting to creep into i think they they took the ban away or they put the ban in again because it was starting to get to like the nice part of town it's like on ladybird lake people just like lakefront property you know what i mean in their tents so they took away the the they banned it again and now it's all cleaned up but bro, some of the people are still out there, but they all just went to the woods. You know what I mean? <laughs> there you go, bro. I'm over here like woodland creatures. I, I, I'm over here yeah. acting like I don't live in Harris County. I'm over here just appalled. <laughs> <laughs> How do people do that? That's yeah, so true. Living like that, yo. Anytime I meet someone from like uh, Montgomery County, like up north and stuff, and they have to come into town for something, they're yeah. just like. Bro, I, it's too many people. How do y'all? I can't. Mm. How, I, mm-hmm. how do y'all? Yeah. What is? And I'm just like, oh, it's just the Galleria. It's just a six ten loop. It, it, it does that. Like yeah. I, sound, <laughs> I sound like a SoCal. It, it'd be like that sometimes. Do you like oh, a yeah. homeless well, you know, forecast <laughs> on the news? Man, bro, that's just like such an eyesore. Yeah, it's good. It, and, and on top of that, there's just Austin just has normal crazy people. You know what I mean? People who are like, yeah. I saw a guy walking on the street yesterday in like a full luchador mask. Yeah, I'm like, that, he's, 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 he's got to be. Yeah. It wasn't, and it wasn't near like San Antonio, like the Fiesta Market, like the. No, he had a suit on. He must. I'm like, he must be a guy. 
Because yeah. it's hot. A suit. Suit. Oh, wait. Was he a famous Mexican wrestler, maybe? I, I'm like, he's got to be. There's no way you're walking around <laughs> no, there is. in that. Yeah, that's like old Austin to me. Like that. <laughs> like, I had a bunch of homies that went to UT, so I was, and I went to school in San Antonio, so I was up at Austin yeah. all the time. That's the Austin 1. That, that I knew, 1.0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's like, yeah, there's just a dude, like, riding by on a unicycle, you know. Yeah, and there's, yeah, those guys. And shit. Like, it's those just guys like, are oh, still around. Yeah, it's hard to tell the difference between yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they're mentally ill, but, like, in a cute kind of way. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. semi-entertaining. Like, <laughs> in a cute yeah, kind of way. Yeah, yeah, quirky. You know, yeah, he's on meth, but, yeah. hey, he's a pretty good guitar player, that guy. <laughs> that, that fucking unicycle, bro. Like, <laughs> you know, he's playing a mandolin on a unicycle. <laughs> you know. Fucking, have you ever seen a homeless guy play a harp? It's fucking beautiful, man. Those you homeless know, guys savant. are talented, dude. Yeah, yeah. We got Jack homeless people, there, too. Man. We got, like, guys, like... Cleaning people's windshields and they just look just yoked. They're I'm just like, getting sun all day. Like, wow. and it's crazy. Fasting. They look good, dude. Yeah, yeah don't eat. Not a lot of processed sun. food. Yeah. You see a homeless person and you're like, man, how do you do it, man? How do you? Yeah, how do you? Yeah, man, how do you put it all together, dude? Poor and homeless. Yeah. <laughs> Swollen homeless. Yeah. yeah. Swollen <laughs> homeless. Swollenness. Swollenness. <laughs> That's a new fitness craze right there. There you go. Yeah. Hey, your chances of a lady taking you in go up. Hell yeah. You know. It's funny you say that, though. I, there were two people that were walking on the side of the road that Saturday night. We went out to do a couple of things. One didn't have a shirt on. When I, he was he was walking towards traffic, gave me the finger as I was driving by. Yeah. And the other guy was all black, also coming, walking towards traffic. I was like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you live in, you live in Austin? I live, yeah, it's like 20 minutes of south of South Austin. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, I try to, I try to avoid it. I never, totally. I never care. People, people get shot all, like, I think we're, uh, we're already at, twice the number of people have been killed this year mm -hmm. than were killed last year. Mm -hmm. And I know a lady, actually I know, I actually know like three, maybe four comics now who have had come back to their car at the end of the night with just the window shot out. Like it look, it looking like San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it gets pretty, Shit. it's pretty dangerous down there. I never felt scared. Shit, down there like until Tuesday where I'm this. from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, hey, uh, Dave, Dave, he's starting to sound like Fox News over here. He's like, you're trying to scare the audience? The what are you doing? It's no coincidence that San Francisco and Austin are both Just another super progressive. Hood, homie. That's all it's I'm like, saying. And weren't these the same people that wanted to defund the police? You know I'm just, oh, dude, I'd never pay for a parking ticket. Either they, I never pay for parking, ever. <laughs> I never get a ticket. There's not enough cops. No. <laughs> You don't have to pay for parking in Austin. Either Good to know. Don't, don't show or don't care what's happening. I for a year I've not paid once for parking. I park everywhere downtown, yeah. everywhere. You I can stole, find a spot. I stole tickets to the UT Police Department, man. <laughs> my dad, got, I used to go up there. I would park back in the my my homie lived in Jester Hall, which is like the giant ass uh, dorm room. There, it has its own zip code. That's how big the the fucking dormitory is there. What? Right? He lived on the same floor where a lot of the, like the the freshman football players are. So. Back was the, the where the food service lot was. They used to park their Denali's and all these fucking badass SUVs they got. So he goes, just park back there. They don't fuck with it because they're football players' cars. I would get a ticket all the time. <laughs> and I, he goes, you don't come to this school. Fucking don't pay it. What, what are they going to do? They yeah. can tell you. It's, all, it's on your credit. You, yeah. well, well, no, they might. They started sending it to, to the house where the cars are registered. So my dad calls me up one day. He goes, what school do you go to again? <laughs> and he goes, St. Mary's? He goes, why am I getting parking tickets from UT Austin? I was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got drunk and I parked, I left my car parked there too long. Because that was the thing. He goes, they don't come by until a certain time. So as long as you move it, and you, you know, slip we in. go down to 6th Street, get a little too drunk, and then be like, I'm just going to leave my car there. It's all right. The UT SWAT team is busting right now. Yeah. <laughs> Looking for yeah. their money. How was uh, South by Southwest? Do they do uh, any yeah. comedy events for that? They do. They do. Some. Either, it's tough for if you live there to get stage time because, like, they have, like, events with, like, you know, big ass people basically they're not really doing comedy they're kind of just doing like i don't know award shows or like you know little like panels and stuff like that yeah. so there's there's some stage time you can get it during south by as a local you can make a good money i did this i did this event it was outdoors two o'clock in the afternoon uh at the french legation which is like um this historical site in austin it was for uh I think it's Pel not Pellegrino. Yeah, San Pellegrino. It's just like their like lounge, whatever. It's like an outdoor mm -hmm. thing, literally like slave quarters. And they like, look at our sparkling <laughs> water. <laughs> and uh, fifteen minutes, and it paid well. I was like, this suck. It's gonna suck. I walked in I'm like this is gonna be bad. No one's no one's gonna have a good time. But they pay you well. You get out of there. 
Nice. Try to avoid downtown. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm at Dave J uh, during the HBO taping. Yeah. For the um, High uh-huh. Comedy Festival. Yeah. 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 And then uh, next thing you know, man, we're sharing the stage in Salt Lake City and yeah, you know stuff like that. Um, that was an interesting experience, man. A uh, shout out to Rick Gutierrez, bro. Rick, yep. uh, he connected yeah. me with the HBO people. Cool. He put in a good word. And uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Are you doing anything for Moon Tower? Because that's coming up, right? Like that's the yeah. com- that's the comedy. Yeah, thing. that's uh, I don't have anything for Moon Tower, uh-huh. but I'm I'm hoping that you know during that event, there's a mm-hmm. lot of like ancillary events around yeah, Austin. Yeah, fringe. You, you know what I mean? Kind of you gotta you gotta kind of there's a lot of pockets in Austin. So you get on Moon Tower, <laughs> like you gotta be in this pocket with these people, yeah. and they go, oh, okay, now I'm on Moon Tower. You gotta be in this pocket. You want to get in Skankfest? You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm, I'm not all the pockets. Yeah. I got a few pockets, but not a yeah. lot. I'm out of pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time. Yeah. But no, it's a, it was that was an awesome experience. That was uh uh the Ha Fest that was a year and a half ago now, I think it was what it's twenty one now. Um that was so cool. It was it was you know, a big part of the reason why I love San Antonio is like I've only had good experiences yeah. in comedy. In San you were Antonio. the one that you got to do. <laughs> they had you do comedy on the, on the, the riverboat, right? Oh my god! Yeah. And what was that like? Man? It was dumb. It was so, <laughs> I mean, it was cool, but like, did you actually? Was, was it just something you shot for behind the scenes? Was it just something you shot, or did you actually do like? A, a the, it, yeah, it, it was kinda. Me. So they were like, get on the boat. Everyone on the boat uh-huh. was like. Some it was somebody that, that was like selected. Like wow. I think one of them was like the in San Antonio they do like the um it's like the queen of the river walk or mm-hmm. I can't remember. Riverboat queen or something. Yeah. Or so like yeah. she's on there and like they had like local bloggers or whatever. So they all kind of get it. And so like you're you're on there, they're like, just do they're like do like five minutes. Whatever you're not gonna do on the thing. And I go, Okay, cool. And uh like, we Dan, that's all I got. <laughs> you're like, you five different ones? Auxiliary minutes? <laughs> Backup minutes? Yeah. So we're on the thing and but every time you go under a bridge, we have to stop because uh, of the light. Uh, so every time we hit a bridge, he's like, All right, stop, and I'm just sitting there just so looking at everything. They're waiting on the punchline. Yeah. <laughs> and then so it turned in it was like fifteen, twenty minutes. Uh, and it was a lot of me and I'm just fucking around with the people on the boat mm-hmm. it, it, it it played so well during that whole presentation yeah. you know what I mean like yeah. that was really honestly that was like a really cool thing to see because like yeah. you know it was it was kind of like um it was just a funny moment, like just it the idea cool. of it, because the way you were even doing it, like yeah, okay, almost like I pictured how Tim Dillon was a uh, a New York tour bus oh, guy, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. you know, and there you are, San Antonio style on the riverboat. Hey, what, da, da, da. it was oh, it was cool. It was fun because everyone on the thing on the boat, they got it. They were they were into it, and they're like, we're gonna be on HBO. You know what I mean? So it was they were fun. Yeah. One of the guys that was on the boat is uh, this MMA fighter. He's a, he's also a comic. Baby Glock. It was Baby Glock. <laughs> so who who is it? There's another. Wait, there's there's two of us. <laughs> it was um, <laughs> Justin Gov- Grovenerdale. Governordale. Governordale. He's a San Antonio guy. I've uh, heard the name. I don't. I can't well, he was just he like. What weight class is? He? I don't. I don't, I don't know. I will look him up. What's his what name? He got definitely got cauliflower ears though. Oh, okay, oh, okay never mind. He's never more mind. advanced yeah. than me. Yeah. I've, got, I've been trying to get my. <laughs> they look like they hurt, man. I, at first, I was like, oh, man, yeah. I want to get them, but now. No, you don't. They look painful because I, I yeah. always watch them when they get them drained. So anyway, he's, he was just on Naked and Afraid. He was like a. Uh, I, we were friends on Instagram after that, and then like I see, I'm watching my wife loves Naked and Afraid, and it comes on. And I'm like, I know that fucking guy. Yeah, <laughs> this it's guy. my boy. <laughs> so the guy with the small blur. I know that yeah. guy. Right there. <laughs> What's yeah, his name? Crazy. Justin Governordale, Governordale, something like yeah, that. Something Justin like G. Just funny. look up Naked and Afraid. Govern. MMA. Naked afraid, naked. That's gotta be hard to to balance, like because both stand up and MMA, yeah. you know, can require quite a bit, especially MMA, right? You know, yeah. but like, but if you also want to like make a splash in the stand up scene, that's gonna require a lot of focus and attention and time. Yeah, to where how the hell? It is. I mean, it's like um, yeah. like just anything just else. It's like a discipline. Yeah. He's also was a former Marine sniper. Wow. Oh yeah, that too. Oh, this guy's a badass. Wow, he's got a resume. For and, and he did spoiler he, alert. And he, he did and all. And we worked together thing. at Twitter. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. He's your head of security at Twitter. <laughs> 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 yeah, this guy's a badass. 
Um, check my resume. Should I, I, should, I might have to get a job in case y'all don't watch this, enough of y'all don't watch this special, man. So, yeah. <laughs> Beefing up that resume. Where can they find it, Javi? I, I, was, I, I was also a regional manager for Circuit City as well. You got you to gotta change the description on the video. Former CEO of Former Twitter. Former CEO. <laughs> yeah. Does stand up. Not for everybody yeah. on YouTube. Um, streaming now. Yes, sir. Tons of clips, too, man. Yeah. Um, Congratulations, that's awesome, dude. Thank you, man. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Had to take yeah. the bull by the horns, you know. Yeah. Down there in Corpus Christi, man, ain't, ain't, ain't too many people knocking on my door, so. Ain't no, too many ain't motherships. My way, you know. Ain't no mothership. Ain't no one building no mothership. Not getting beamed up. In Corpus Christi, you know, so. <laughs> so I had to had to make my own thing happen, you know. That's it. That's the good thing about the mothership is a good way. It's like a reunion with everybody you ever met in, in Texas. Yeah. Every comic, you go out there getting that line. And you see San Antonio, Corpus people, El Paso. I'm like, oh, look, what are you doing Man. here? People coming out. <laughs> so you you, were you said you never went in. You've been in there, right? That not unless no? you buy unless you, you buy a ticket in. or you're on a show, they won't let you <sighs> in. Then that might change. I'm hoping it changes. Yeah. Because everywhere else, everywhere else in Austin, if you're a comic, you could go After anywhere. Comes down. But they showed out for like a year or something like that. Is it? Oh, I don't. I don't even think that? they have. They they put up a show. Yeah. Like if the show's tomorrow, they put up the tickets today and it's sold out. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy expensive, bro. It, you said expensive. Crazy expensive. I mean, yo, talk about. I wonder how the people at the comedy store. I mean, I mean, not the comedy store is still there. Yeah. But like to see Rogan just like at the flip of a switch, like just okay. summon the success, like of like, yeah. all right, this is where all the well, it's all the big good a, name, a, a, a a true of, influencer. Yeah, like yeah. plus you got like all your big comedy friends, the whole Marvel universe. Yeah, like they're gonna <laughs> right. be dropping. Oh, Ron White's dropping in or whatever. Yeah. And I, I wonder how them comedy store yeah. people. The JCU, the Joe Comedy Universe. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it must be tough because it's definitely, you know, what I've heard, comedy stores, just, it's obviously not what it used to be. They lost a lot of big guys, you know. But, um, yeah, it is funny because he can kind of just go, like, I chose this is the new hotspot. And everyone's like, okay. Mm -hmm. Did right. any of y'all perform at the comedy store ever? I, I, I was I scheduled to do the belly room as a part of a show. But when I was staying in L.A., there was so much happening, and I probably had to go host some shit for Intocable or something mm. like that. So I was like, damn, it's so much going on that I'm literally having to skip out on a, on like, call the people, hey, man, sorry, I'm not going to be able to make it. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I got to do the OR and the and the belly. Oh, badass. On the same night. That's so awesome. Cool. Yeah. It, it, it felt cool, like, being on that stage where so many, like, uh, yeah. you know, major players had, had been on. Yeah. 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 Definitely, if, if you're an appreciator of the craft, you can't be there and not appreciate it. Yeah. You know, I, I don't believe it to be some kind of like magic portal into making it, but it's it's cool for the history of it, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially, I mean, you're you're sitting in, in the Central Valley in California. You're doing those like old Fox theaters. Yeah. There's a lot of history in those rooms, mm -hmm. not just comedy, just like all kinds of, you know, music and vaudeville shit that has happened in those theaters. Um that stuff is cool to me. When you go there, you talk to people who be like, I worked here for 10,000 years, you know, <laughs> back when there was no electricity and yeah, they have all these man. crazy stories, you know? You used to mm -hmm. have candles on the, yeah. on, on the sconces, man. Yeah. That is interesting, though. I don't know if Texas has that equivalent. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, maybe, but not that I know of off the top of my head. Like, oh, there's this, the blah, blah, blah theater in San Marcos and the blah, blah, blah theater. Cine El Rey, yeah, maybe? Yeah, like the Majestic, yeah. the, the Cine El Rey. We have one in Corpus It's not fully operational called, called it's the ritz which is a ritz you know a lot of places but but th this one you know where where uh, um, uh metallica played when they were first starting you, you know yeah stuff, stuff like that so so there's th a lot there's of different places there's a lot of really deep his comedy history too in in texas specifically in houston you know, like that it was is a mm -hmm. comedy workshop from i don't know mm -hmm. i can't remember when like 70s 80s um but like a lot of really big names and influential people have come out of Houston. Yeah, like, Houston was it. it wasn't New York or LA. It was, it was, it was yeah. Houston. It's, <laughs> it's, and that's, you know, and I was, like, we're going to talk about this in, in a little bit about like the history of Houston rap. I think that too, people don't, people think about New York and LA, they think about the coast, but they don't realize how much art and mm -hmm. comedy and music comes out of Texas. The yeah. third coast. That's and, right. And then Laugh Stop, when Laugh Stop put in their, they were the first ones to put in like their their own recording equipment. Mm -hmm. So a lot of 
comedy albums started getting recorded here. Like Bob Newhart recorded his first comedy album. Oh yeah, here in Houston. Did it, like Dane did it, Cook and Rogan's Dane Cook, first one, right? Dane Cook as well. Yeah, his first one. Rogan's first one. Was, was, was I think Mitch Hedberg here. didn't he didn't he record? I think it's it's called I think it's Strategic Grill Locations where there's someone I playing a bass the whole time yeah. in the background. I think that was it was here in Houston. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Ralphie May from Arkansas oh, started yeah. here. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of people off. They fucking treated them like shit, man. Did they really? Yeah. 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 Read his book. Uh, this this could get oh, heavy. Yeah. yeah he yeah, talks yeah. a lot about 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 how uh, they they fucked with them. They they uh, they he had a gig. And they pretended to be someone else calling him with an even bigger gig, so he would cancel that. And he handed it off to someone. Oh, he gets yeah. all the way down. It was somewhere in the valley. He gets all the way down there. The place doesn't even fucking exist, bro. That's and fun. yeah, and all, all because he had a previous relationship with Kennison from when he used to, yeah, when, when he lived in in Arkansas or Tennessee or wherever. He he linked up with Kennison, yeah, and felt like he jumped the line. Kennison invited him to go to like a radio station with them, and and it opened up some doors for him and they were pissed because you didn't go through the yeah. through through the the uh work the protocol or whatever it was yeah and you follow the protocol kind of what, what esg was talking about yeah last time you know how, yeah. how gatekeepy comedians can be yeah yeah interesting you know? yeah it's, the thing is it's not there's no uh com people say comedy is a meritocracy but i don't really believe that when you're on no. stage it is like they laugh or they don't yeah but outside of that no. the funniest guy is not the most successful guy every time do you know what i mean like it, it's it if you're doing it right you you're doing both people know who you are they can relate to you and you are extremely talented performer and writer and all that stuff mm -hmm. but yeah like that i ralphie may i think when he performed for he opened for kennison it was like the third time he'd ever done comedy mm -hmm. And he, <sighs> and he'd won a contest. Yeah, he got to open for him. Wow. And so, so then he's like, "Go to Houston." And he was like, "Okay, I'll go to Houston." You know. But yeah, there's a there's a lot of a lot of heavy hitters coming out of mm -hmm. out of Texas. What got you into comedy? I when I was in high school, I was so I'm 33. Are we 34 soon? So I was like the perfect age for like the height of Comedy Central. You know what I mean? Like Chappelle's show, the, the, all the half hours when they were still like playing half hours on TV regularly, every Friday night it would be all half hours. Um, that that whole era, you know what I mean? Daily Show, Chappelle's show, Mencia, Tough Crowd. Like I just consumed mm -hmm. a lot of comedy as a kid. I only watched Comedy Central. Yeah, like premium My, Blend. Premium, yeah, was, Premium Blend. That's when Dane great. Cook's half hour came yeah. out where he's in the black tank top. Mm -hmm. And I watched stuff like that. They were constantly playing blue collar comedy tour oh, i wasn't yeah. seen that a million times and my i would watch with my mom and watch kings of comedy we had we, must, we had it on tape so i was just getting yeah. all different kinds of comedy input when i was in high school i'm like i'm from the middle of nowhere massachusetts i'm like oh, i'm gonna be a comedian i'm like writing jokes and then i i just couldn't figure out like what am i supposed to do i wrote these jokes i guess i don't know and then i, I started my life like i went to college I had a family and got a job and did all this stuff and I was like, after doing that for a long time, I was like, well, I, I have to start. Like, I'll always regret if I don't just try. And um, I went to an open mic one, three nights in a row because I can't do anything unless I'm obsessed with it. Like, I, it's the worst, my worst and best quality. Mm -hmm. I went three nights in a row and I'm like, okay, I have to keep going. You know what I mean? I just, if I, if I stop, it, each time I'm like, oh, I can, I see other people who have something that I want and I'm like, I can do that. You know what I mean? And so sometimes it just takes that exposure. You just see someone who's like, oh, I see. I can touch that person. I can do that. And so I just kept doing that. You know what I mean? But I just, I don't know. I just love it. I feel like, I, to me, my whole like, kind of approach and philosophy to comedy is, uh, is laugh or cry. Whatever, whatever in your life you, you, you think should be making you cry, you make a joke about it. Mm. And that's how I grew up. Me, mm -hmm. me, my mom, my sister, we would just roast each other all day. <laughs> and so it's like if you can't if you can't laugh at your problems then they're real problems mm. you know that's great I mean? philosophy yeah laugh or cry laugh or cry got me all the way here to the jingle bling world headquarters <laughs> <laughs>
to this live therapy session. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm on the lay down here. Cry. I fucking love it. We need a couch in here <laughs> next time. Shit. That was beautiful, bro. It's, just... <laughs> it's, good. it's a great yeah, way yeah, to look man. at it. Are we knocking out an episode up, of uh, Dave's yeah. podcast today too? What's your podcast called, by the way? Okay, yeah, my podcast is called This Dave in History. Very nice. Clever. History buff, huh? Yeah, I read a lot of history. You know? And so uh, I started doing this show um, where me and another comedian will talk about some story from history, some topic from history. Um, I, and it's just most of the time it's stuff that like I'll think of like, what do I know a good amount about? I'll do a little bit of research and go, all right, we're just going to talk about that. So don't you watch this? You watch the podcast. Don't Google anything we say. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just believe it. Just believe we pretty much we got the right idea. Oh, okay. we're not going to get all the all the details. OK, correct. good. Because uh, yeah. I was sweating. Bullets. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, hey, man, what? what don't fact check us. He's like, well, hey, man, what type of history are you good at? I'm like, uh, <laughs> history. It's like, it could be Houston rap if you want. I was like, OK. <laughs> I think that's cool to be able to do something like that with someone like you. Do you know what I mean? Like I did an episode on Tejano music with uh, Sonny Salceda. What? And uh, it was awesome because we talked, uh, I think we did an hour and maybe we talked like 20 minutes about Tejano music. We really talked about like him and, you know, uh, his career and kind of his philosophy around being a musician. But like, you know, I want to talk about history with the people who were there. You know what I mean? That's to me. That's super interesting. My kids are, you know, my oldest is eleven now. We never were like national park people, but now we go on road trips. We're like, we'll go here and like just go like, hey, some crazy shit happened here before. Isn't that cool? You know what I mean? Like you're here, standing in it. So that's the type of shit that I like. Nice. You know? like the Gettysburg Address happened. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. The Dairy Queen there now. You know. Right. <laughs> 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 so like, yeah. Every every. Uh, that's the thing that sometimes people don't realize, like, like for example, uh, you know, my wife, man, she liked to spoil me, man. She took me on a couple trips, you know what I'm talking about? So let's say we're looking at the uh, pyramids or something in Mexico, and you're just like, wow, so much history. And it's like, oh, fuck, it's like a flea market over here. They're yeah. just selling bullshit trinkets, and yeah. no matter where you go, it's like, oh, fuck. The tourist attraction, man. Yeah, yeah it's like, oh, the Great the Wall of China, and it's like, oh, fuck, Burger King. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, people yeah. gotta eat, Chingo, you, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. So uh, I got a quadruple dip on the pyramids. Hell yeah! <laughs> you know what, I'm what about your tour days, yeah, brother? Pyramid, pyramid sponsored by <laughs> Deva Khan. Middle Let people know your tour days, Javi. Well, oh, uh, well, well, I'm with you. I'm gonna be with you <laughs> in, 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 in El Paso. Uh, but also, I got my my uh, uh, stand up and smoke fest uh, on 420 uh, in Corpus, man. It's gonna be comedy and music, man. We're doing a roast battle. We're doing a show. My joke pusher showcase. I'm showcasing like four or five comics. I'm the host and MC of the whole damn thing. Uh, we got a band coming out. Going to do a Jimi Hendrix tribute. Uh, we're going to have a, a for the VIP section. We're going to have an infused uh, buffet sponsored by QBR Cannabis, man. And it's going to be uh, fun. Wow. Check that out, dude. Where's this going to be at? Uh, at Alexia's Event Center in Corpus Christi. Badass. Yeah, yeah. Really excited. Partnering up with Mike G Productions down there, man. He's he's a he's a big Dehano promoter down there, and he. He's put me on on stage with 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 with, with the you know the the Kumia Kings and DJ Kane by himself and Shelly Lattes and and um, and we ran into each other on the streets of Corpus and he goes what well, what do you got coming up next man what are you gonna do here locally next and I was originally gonna do like a pop up show like I was like I'm gonna do like a like a secret like 420 show like you get the address day of mm -hmm. probably do mm -hmm. it like like you know at a, at a smoke shop or something he goes. He goes, well, if you want to do something bigger, man, let's get together and chop it up, see what we can do, man. I'll hook, hook you up with some sponsors and stuff. And and so got to rapping. That's how it happened kind, kind of situation. And then, of course, I'm doing my Gordito de Mayo. That, that's going to be a straight up. That's a straight stand-up show. But it's going to be fun. That, that's going to be uh, on Cinco de Mayo, May 5th, at, in San Antonio at Upstage Comedy Lounge. Nice. Where is that? What's that? Uh, where is Upstage? It's uh, over off of W.W. White Road. So on the not east side, I don't know what you would call it. It's like, like, you're going yeah. to Austin, like like almost like you're thirty was that 30, like you're going up to Austin, yeah. Like thirty five north. Yeah, yeah, thirty five north, four ten. There used to be a little club over there called Paradise. Probably. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. You know and then uh I am I am going coming to Denver. It's official but like not official announced. I am coming to Denver end of September as part of a uh, Latino comedy festival 
they got up there a uh, result of, of of the special they saw the special nice originally That's they were awesome. like they were like oh maybe like a friend of mine was like oh man like you should check out this festival it's supposed to be Latin, latino comedy in denver uh, you know, you know, maybe they, they'd be interested in having you. He sent them the special. Next thing I know, they're like, "Hey, man, we'd like you to headline the whole thing, three nights, Hell uh, yeah. in Denver and surrounding areas." So, so I'm looking forward to that. The end power of, of the internet. Yeah, man. yeah. That's yeah. in September. In, in end of September. Yeah. Nice, bro. Congrats. Yeah, uh, thank you. Javi's had some really fun rides in Denver. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know. <laughs> Lots of fun. He's, and some he's not a so, fun guy. And, some not, and, not, and not so fun. He was powered up off them shrooms like Mario. <laughs> Denver's <laughs> the first place I got. I ever, I ever got high. Ever? Yeah. This That's is last a great year. Place. That's I was a never. Place. I never got into weed, and then went to yeah. Denver. It was actually a beautiful time of year in the fall, and I was mm-hmm. like, wow. Or they got and yeah, that's what did I'm they give you some strong it. stuff yeah. for that being your first time? Did they give you some strong? No, stuff? I just got like little gummies. They were like maybe there were fives or so something. You like went that. edible on your first time. I want to. Okay. You know what? I I vaped like a weed pen before, but I just like to eat it. Like my me and my wife, our new thing is like with the kids to sleep, uh-huh. pop a couple gummies, get some wing stop. And okay. just watch Naked and Afraid. Nice. And laugh. And then get naked and afraid. <laughs> yeah, then we get naked and afraid, <laughs> Do you afraid, pop it a little dude? bit before the kids? Like, <laughs> I got a story about that. I can't tell you. <laughs> like, like, do you give yourself time? Because, like, like, last night, I tell you, I took one too late. Yeah. I was up to 2 o'clock in the morning. Because, like, I waited yeah. until after she was asleep, after I had already cleaned up the kitchen, whatever. And I was like, oh, let me take an edible. It's like, oh, shit, it's 9 o'clock at night. I'm, I'm going to be up all late now. Yeah, we got to time like, it out. Yeah, time it. I find, we like, bad them? time. During bad time, you take the yep. gummy. By the time they're in bed... Prayers are said. Yeah. And so yeah, the clock starts ticking. Yeah. You pop you brush your teeth faster. Yeah, brush yeah, your teeth. Yeah, Hurry up. Yeah, yeah. These, Daddy, are ra- these are rapid release. Daddy's <laughs> feeling happy. These are, na- na- these are nanos, man. These are going to kick in a little faster. <laughs> you got to time them out. You got to time them out. I'm not sure when this episode drops, but uh, I'm headed to El Paso. Javi Luna will be on the stage, man, sharing that spotlight with your boy, April 6th, 7th, and 8th. Then we're headed to Macramento, Sacktown, the Bay Area, and back down. We're headed to Sacramento, the Punchline. First time there, uh, April 19th. And then San Jose Improv on 420. Brownsville, 421. Alamo, Texas, 422. So I'm going to be a flying-ass fool. A whole bunch of more dates. Hit up the website, chingobling.com. Major announcement about Houston. So y'all stay tuned about that. That's going down in June. You're going to see some street team efforts, man. Y'all going to see them like... You know, like that corrugated plastic, like political signs, like on a stake. <laughs> We're gonna see some grassroots. We're going we we taking it like record label style. Mm-hmm. Okay, you might see a rap vehicle. I don't know what y'all gonna street see. team. Oh yeah, but we are trying to do it real big in Houston. So thank you guys so much for tuning in, man. This is gonna be a part two to this. So we appreciate. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. All our podcasts. We want to put them on the What Did He Said RSS feed. So if you follow Cafecito Time or any other of our shows. We're going to start putting them all under the What Did He Said umbrella. That way, we're just uploading like pretty much daily. So thank you guys so much, and please tell a friend. Y'all, peace out. That's...